Hey, this is Damon with Haggerty at Redline Rebuild Updates. We are working on our small block Chevy, and uh, well, the plan was, is right away here today, was to run over Thurby's and start all the machine work, and I was gonna let Mark do all the grungy teardown work on these heads, but it's spring, and they are backed up to the hilt, so I'm gonna do everything that I can on the heads even, get it stripped down, and then we'll go over there. So uh, I gotta get my work done here, then we'll go over there. What happened? Oh, I put it way over there. See so what happened to the? You need magnets or anything? Yeah. Well, I do. I got I got it over there though. That help you? All right, so here's my rockauto.com tip of the day. It's a pretty easy one, quite frankly, but getting these retainers out of here, or the keepers out, a little magnet goes a long ways to fish these out of here. One went down the hole. These are some little bells, boy. 172s, I think they are. Well, that went pretty, uh, pretty quick and straightforward. So now my cylinder heads are completely tore down. The seats aren't, <laughs> well, they're here. We'll put it that way. It's definitely gonna need some exhaust seats first off because these are the stock ones which are not hardened for unleaded fuel. So we'll change that on the exhaust valves and on the intakes, probably get away with just cleaning those up. Um, and of course, all the other stuff that goes along with the heads. Um, so with that, I can start getting things loaded up, but here's the block. It's gonna look quite a bit different from when it came out of the parts washer, mainly because I spent uh, a good amount of time yesterday going through and cleaning up the casting. So as you know, I'm silly about casting flash. So I went through and ground off all the casting flash as far as like on the edges you know, here's a good example. There's always a ridge right here. So ground that smooth. The paint's gonna stick better. That's the point. Uh, and also any kind of sharp edges make for uh, uh, handling and uh, stress risers when it comes to the um, strength of, of anything. So I went through and did that. Plus the casting itself was fairly rough. So yeah, I, I took a little time with a sanding roll and 
well, again, the paint's gonna stick better and look better when it's all said and done. And uh, from there, we'll let Thoroughly bake this thoroughly and get the rest of this grime out of it. And of course, wash the daylights out of it. I blew all kinds of stuff already out of the, um, out of the water jackets. Um, with, with the rust on the floor in the dirty room, it looked like there was a minor explosion of some animal in there, but uh, we cleaned that floor up too. So, so that's covered. But inner hay, that's gonna get all loaded up into the Jeep. It's going to make its maiden voyage of hauling parts over to Thoroughby's. Where you want them? Right back here, hey? Yeah, we can set, what do we do at first? That's a box. Well, they're gonna clean everything, so want me to take them over there? Yeah, we can set them right by the table. All right, ready? Yep. All right, well, like normal process, we'll take uh, the block, put it in the oven, bake it, fire it, whichever you want to call it, run it through the uh, abrasive um, blaster, and then tumble it, cool it off, crack check it, and then it'll go over to Mikey, and uh, we'll start the boring process and, and decking the top surface. <clears throat> so how well did she do, right? Look too bad at all. Oh yeah. Smooth though. We got all of our crap out of here. Well, that's good. Love the chisel marks from the factory. Nice job. I like it. Mike's got this all cleaned up for us. Of course, doing this side's real easy because uh, the numbers aren't on the pad. But on this side, it gets a little tricky and I usually get scolded because I want to keep them. But uh, you got your, your stamp numbers from GM. This ties it to the vehicle. It's also a date code, same time. So uh, at the end of the day, on this particular block is T for Tonawanda, which is the plant that it was, the block was produced. Uh, 05 as in May, and, um, and then 06 as in the 6th of May. Or, I'm sorry, that's just 6. So June, sorry. June 6th. And then DE is the code that ties it to the car that it was out of. So that's numbers matching at that point. And then across the back are your date code on the casting. So that's your machining code up front. This is the date code of the casting. So this is May 28th of 66. So those are all the numbers that people get nervous about at times. With that, we're rolling it over to Mike on the other side of the shop for the boring bar. And we'll get that ridge cleaned up and get it prepped for pistons. So as we expected, the block cleaned up at 30 over. As soon as we get our pistons, then we'll do our final, final hone and the block will be done and ready for paint and assembly. Cool.
Mark's going through and doing all the heads, the pair of heads. So what we're doing is putting in fresh um, valves, obviously, on both sides. And then we're also doing, uh, you'd have to clean up the guides and then putting in fresh seats on the exhaust side, put hardened seats in it so we can use unleaded gas. And then on the, uh, on the intakes, we're just going to clean up that seat. Now, technically, these aftermarket valves are larger on the seat size. So we're a little bit bigger by about 30 thousandths larger. We're not gonna oversize the valves like I was kicking around going to a, what would be referred to as a 305 valve, which would be about a, a one inch uh, 84 on the intake opposed to the 172s. But um, we're gonna stick with the smaller one. This will go actually a, technically be a 1750. And um, so we get a little bit more valve, but we're gonna keep our low end torque in that and we're gonna clean up the back side of these valves. We're gonna put a 30 on here. So that'll help us on our low lift uh, flow. That helps torque, that helps street performance. Now, <clears throat> as he went through them, these, um, uh, the shaft on the valves are 30 thousandths larger uh, than, I'm sorry, 15 thousandths larger than stock. So what he did is he took a reamer that has a pilot, which is the stock size, and then the 30,000 section here, and then go through and ream that open just a little bit. That way we don't need to add liners, we can use the stock guides and then just freshen them up with a reamer by going a little bit bigger. So that cleans up that side of it. Then of course, normal process on the, on the exhaust side is you go in, you cut that original seat completely out, and then you press in a hardened seat. And then of course, machine the ceiling surfaces on both intake and exhaust valves and then that'll pretty much wrap this up. So pretty straightforward from a, that side of process. Of course, if you've never done that before, it's not straightforward, but um, yeah. All right, well, we have our seats completely done. And you can see one of the things we did, we went in and, and cut a little relief here on the sidewall. So cut this back. So when the valve comes up, it's got a little more clearance to the outside edge. That'll let the flow of the intake valve, um, well, basically flow a little better. So we did that on all, the, all eight of the intake valves. So those changer, chambers are cut back a little bit there. And, uh, but that's gonna wrap it up here for today. So. Hopefully you enjoyed all that. Click and subscribe if you haven't for some reason and turn the notifications on and all that type of stuff because, well, you know, you don't want to miss out on something interesting. So after that, get out in the shop, get your work done, and uh, you know, find a good machine shop to take your stuff to. See you.